Hi, Dr. Garima here again. Uh, just came from the clinic, so still in the scrubs. Uh, my son will be here in the next 15, 20 minutes. So I thought before he comes, let's just shoot a video. I could not do so in the past three days. Uh, today, uh, we'll be solving another Australian dental uh, scenario based question. See, uh, I want to say something uh, for all the candidates who are enrolled with me and uh, the newer candidates which are looking forward to get enrolled. Who am I? I am a person who's trying to help you to clear the exam by guiding you appropriately. It's like if you have a car and you know how to drive because that is the basic requisite. If you are coming in a exam where you have to reach a certain location by navigating through different things. So when you reach at a crossroad and you have a doubt, I'm there to tell you to go left or right. But I can't teach you how to drive the car. That's the prerequisite of coming to the exam. You should know how to drive the car and you should have a car, right? Similarly, when a, a candidate is getting enrolled or a new person is coming and most of y'all are freshly passed out graduates, I do understand that your clinical knowledge is limited. But I do expect that your theoretical knowledge of the clinical subjects is adequate. So... Don't expect me to teach you dentistry, right? That you have to learn by yourself by opening the books. If you don't know in uh, how to do a pulpotomy or which material is going to be used, I would tell you to go back and read your textbook. In which scenario, what procedure you can do, if you're confused about that, then I can guide you. But if you tell me to teach what a pulpotomy is or what a pulpectomy is, I'm sorry, I can't do that. You know, you have to open your textbook and do it. So uh, don't come with the wrong set of expectations that because we are enrolling with Dr. Karima, she's going to teach us. No, she's going to mentor you. She's going to guide you. But knowing the dental theoretical knowledge is your responsibility. If you don't know that, then it's very difficult for you all to clear the exam. As it is, the exam is very tough because it has a lot of questions and you have to clear that in a very short span of that deadline. And they give you like complex situations sometimes. But if you are a good clinician, you'll navigate through the situations very easily. But I do understand you don't have that much of clinical experience. Most of you, there are a lot of other clinicians also who are appearing for the exam who have a different set of problems. Uh, but, but getting confused in clinical scenario is not one of them. But if you're going to be confused with the clinical scenarios because you have not practiced that much and you don't know your dental concepts, then it's going to be really, really tough. So my serious suggestion is please get your dental concepts cleared. And that is why I'm shooting these videos. But I can't shoot videos on all the dental subjects and all topics, right? That's humanly not possible. Uh, you require years and years and that is why dentistry for five years. So, but I try to take the important topics and I do talk about it. And then I also say at the end of my video, go back, read more about it. I can just give you a summary and a gist. But the main concept learning will happen only when you read it. So, uh, please take it seriously. Okay. <laughs> so, let's, let's go ahead and solve one of the questions. And uh, Australian Dental Council is not testing your dental knowledge. It expects you to know the dental knowledge. It is, ex it, it is testing your clinical judgment because that is what is going to determine how you're going to practice and treat patients appropriately. So it is not testing whether you know how to treat or not. No, the exam conducting people assume that you know how to treat, but they just want to know if you are going to do the right treatment. So uh, if you are confused about how to do the treatment, you really have to study more. What treatment to do in what situations, you'll learn by clinical uh, knowledge. And if you don't have that, that's why I solve the past papers a lot. Because theory will tell you what to do, how to do to a certain extent. But in which scenario, what to do in a very short span of time, you have to understand and take a decision that the past papers will help you pass the exam and in your clinical skills as well. So yeah, let's solve one more question. A 23-year-old male presents to your clinic complaining of a discoloration of his teeth. 
history reveals that the patient was born and grown up in an area that had excess minerals in its water supply. See, the patient is coming to you for dental purpose and when they see there were some extra minerals where I was born and grown up and that's why uh, my teeth and all my neighbors teeth and the kids of them are having uh, the same scenario. You know it is fluorosis, right? <laughs> that should just click in your head. Uh, so the medical history is not relevant. Okay, in case it was and if he was the only person affected by it, then the medical history probably would have said that he had cystic fibrosis or some condition for which he had taken tetracyclines or was prescribed that very early in his life till the age of eight years. Two scenarios where fluorosis can exist. Uh, not fluorosis, rather, I'm sorry. Fluorosis, when the uh, fluoride is present more in water. Tetracycline will cause stains, bad stains, uh, which can look similar to this picture or even worse. So basically, the picture that you see is called as mottling. It's, it's like it's a mottled appearance. The enamel is like frosty, snow-capped. There are various levels of fluorosis. Various levels means it can be mild or it can be so severe that the enamel is broken down depending on how much fluoride was present in water. So what you should know is what is the minimum concentration on which not the flora, fluorosis can start. It is above 2 ppm. If the question mentions you 0.2 ppm in one of the options, don't choose that. Read, read the option properly. So you should have a sound knowledge of how much ppm of fluoride can cause fluorosis, how fluorosis looks like, what are the non-invasive treatment of fluorosis, what are the invasive treatment of fluorosis, at what age to do what. Okay, so if, if you have not read much about it, pause this video, go open your pedo textbook, read more about it, come back and then solve this question. So he is a casual smoker with good oral hygiene. So let's go ahead. So the keyword here and the picture, excess minerals in water. And that he has discoloration of teeth and that is his chief, chief complaint. It is not pain, it is not sensitivity, it is a chief complaint is discoloration. So what is the most likely diagnosis? We spoke about it. <laughs> it's fluorosis. Tetracycline stains, uh, if, if they would have said the medical history is relevant and they would have said the patient took tetracyclines or medicines, then I would have gone with it. But since the medical history is not relevant, tetracycline stains are out of the question. Dentinogenesis imperfecta, it does not look like this. I think there was a video where I had shown how dentinogenesis imperfecta looks. If you don't know, pause this video, Google, see how it looks. It doesn't look like this at all. Uh, tobacco stains. Uh, so he is a casual smoker. And this does not look like tobacco stains. <laughs> Fluorosis, yes. Caries, this is not caries. Caries can result because of breaking down of enamel if the oral hygiene is not kept proper but this is not caries. So the answer is fluorosis and the reason uh, I'm not just taking questions I have also kept for this video the feedback option open is because I want you all to read this that uh, whenever fluoride exceeds 2 ppm parts per million then fluorosis results. Permanent teeth are affected. Mottling of deciduous teeth is rare. I want you all to remember this. A uh, typical effect is spotty, paper white, enamel opacities. Snow capped appearance is also one of it. Brown extremising staining of these patches may be acquired after eruption. So read more. Uh, there is a reference also, but any basic pedo textbook will also give you this. Now, what is the first choice of treatment in this case? C. Whenever the question says which is the first choice, uh, always go with the minimum invasive option and a cost effective option. It is asking the first choice. It is not saying the best choice. The best choice will definitely be giving a nice laminate or a veneer. But is that cost effective and is that non-invasive? No. So that keyword here is the first choice. So whenever you say what is the first level of treatment that you would do, Probably all the options given 
are the treatments that can be done but out of that if i have to choose the most minimum and the minimum cost effective and uh, minimum invasive then i would go with an office bleaching walking bleach technique is for non vital teeth the teeth are not non vital here they are pretty much vital and in walking bleach technique uh, you it's done in teeth where root canal has already been done so you just open up the pulpal space and you put in sodium perborate and then you close it and then you leave the tooth as it is for a couple of weeks that is not the treatment being done here composite restoration is a very good treatment but again it's invasive and it's expensive full crown coverage best treatment but again it's very invasive and it's expensive end office bleaching uh, you are neither removing any tooth structure nor uh, you are drilling the tooth nor it is too expensive so end office bleaching is the answer of choice many students ask why not the above options they are correct like i said they are all a form of treatment except the walking bleach one but uh, they are not the first choice you understand so read what the examiner is asking you these are not mcq based question these are scenario based question which means in what scenario you will do what so uh, again explanation is given read through it pause the video so you get the concepts clear what is the choice of in office bleaching solution now this is kind of a direct question which will have one specific answer so you should be knowing the concentration what you are using 5% sodium hypochlorite sodium perborate 35% hydrogen peroxide 10% carbamide peroxide 5% hydrogen peroxide carbamide peroxide is for home bleaching 35% hydrogen peroxide is the right choice and that is why it is in office bleaching because 35% hydrogen peroxide is a very caustic agent it should be handled by professionals only and that is why it is done in office but, but then because of that concentration only you get the instant result of in office bleaching and your teeth look like three shades whiter so uh, this is what you're supposed to mug up this you should be knowing it right so again uh, a good explanation is given for the video read more about it when hydrogen peroxide is used as a bleaching agent what should be the ph of the solution to be effective it is 9 again mug it up please the effect of hydrogen peroxide bleaching is directly proportional to the increase of its ph the significant increase in bleaching outcome occurs from ph 6 to the maximum effectiveness achieved with ph 9 so this you'll have to learn <laughs> this is a dental question now for this case the dentist is planning to do laminate after bleaching what is the minimum time that he should wait after the bleaching procedure for proper shade selection now for here before i give the answer out i want to read the feedback see it is always best to wait a month after bleaching to let the shade settle prior to selecting the new shade of the teeth careful pre planning would eliminate this costly crisis from occurring wait at least 2 weeks to replace composite restorations to a newer lighter shade wait at least 6 to 8 weeks to place veneers as bond strength could be weakened that is the logic behind it wait at least 6 weeks for the shade to settle prior to shade matching for anterior crumbs So for composite, it's at least two weeks, and for uh, anterior crowns and uh, veneers, it's six to eight weeks. Now let's go back to the options. We have one week, two to three weeks, three months, three days, and one week, and immediately after bleaching is completed. So you all know immediately after bleaching is completed, you are not going to give uh, the laminate. When they say laminate. uh they mean the composite front laminate so as we read it is 2 to 3 weeks 3 months is 12 weeks which is way too far so 2 to 3 weeks is the right answer there is another question in my mock uh, where uh, home bleaching is done and uh, the question is asked how much time to wait before composite restoration can be done and there the answer is one week see the home bleaching goes on for 2 to 3 weeks it is not a one time procedure 
and home bleaching is not as strong as in office bleaching and in home bleaching uh, because the shade is not turned like three times lighter probably a one or two shades lighter it is way more stable so you don't have to wait for like two three weeks for after the bleaching for the shade to settle in because it is kind of settled in two to three weeks itself and maximum you can wait for a week more because like i said the concentration of the bleach solution is very less and uh, it doesn't cause much changes in the shade except for one or max two shades lighter so you can wait for a week and go for a composite because there the answer differs so many students get confused that uh, doctor in one mark you mock you had given two to three weeks but this is in office bleaching and that is home bleaching there is a difference you know so uh, i hope this helps and uh, like always i keep on getting a lot of queries daily on the email uh i reply to all of you all uh facebook request i have accepted for last sunday and the next batch of request i will ac accept in the coming week or if i have time today let me see um yeah pretty much that's about it how's how's your life going on less time for the exam don't freak out it is tough i understand but don't focus on like knowing everything focus on revising your even if out of 100 80% of your concepts are clear you have better chances of clearing the exam than reading everything 100 not remembering 60% of it i'm going for the exam and then failing it and then there is more frustration that i read everything why why didn't i clear because you didn't revise your concepts were not clear so instead of choosing the right answer you chose a wrong one because you overlooked the keywords like initial best first choice of treatment and you just chose the treatment you thought is correct according to the theory no this is not theory this is a clinical scenario based question for each question imagine you are standing in your opd and there is a patient on the dental chair and depending on the circumstances you are choosing the option and you have multiple options like for example today a patient came to me and uh, there was a nice deep do cavity and it's a 6 year old girl but a very hyperactive wouldn't sit on the chair and the patient was like doctor let's do the filling and i'm like no wait let's take the x-ray first we took the x-ray bad roots doctor can you save uh, i'm like no not possible extraction is the only option now even if the roots were good there is no way she would have cooperated for a root canal treatment so based on that scenario extraction still would have been the option of choice you know but if the patient uh, was very cooperative and good roots then i would have chosen root canal as a treatment and presented it to the patients so see scenario differed though i had both the options of extractions and root canals uh, it differs in the scenario right how the patient is how the conditions are how much the patient can afford it that is what the adc needs to know from you if you understand that and not be fixated on a particular treatment that is there in your head so i hope uh, this video helps and uh, please write it in the comments I'm always happy to help but again remember I'm here as a guide I'm trying as much as to clear the concepts but I cannot teach you all the industry fully that is on you you have to learn that read more books love your subject if you take it as a task oh my god I have to read this to clear my exam then you will not enjoy and that you stretching yourself just to finish one task is not going to help in the exam maybe you'll clear the exam but it's not out of passion it's out of just because i have to do it but there's a good chance you won't because you didn't enjoy the subject so your memory did not imbibe it your intuition has to kick in so enjoy it love it it's not a waste of you going back and opening your textbook you are becoming a better clinician you clear the exam or not focus on the goodness and not the success success will follow if you focus on the goodness of it so yeah enough for the day <laughs> bye